First point on the road for United, but what a game. Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View, and it's time to do another review of another Oxford United game. Today, Oxford were away at an old foe. Luton Town. And my goodness, we've had some battles with the Hatters over the years, not least those times where we were in the conference together, or National League, I should say. But times are very different now, and Luton have just been relegated out of the Premier League. Oxford obviously new to life in the Championship. It's Oxford who will come away with this one, probably the happier of the two sides. It was a soggy, wet and wild affair in Luton and that no doubt played its part in this game but it's the second game in a row where Oxford have come up against a side that's newly relegated out of the Premier League and they haven't been beaten in fact they stage a fantastic comeback and might have even won this game it finished Luton Town 2 Oxford United 2 and we'll get into everything about this exhilarating match in just a few moments. We'll go over the team news, we'll do a review of the game, and I'll give my final thoughts for both sides at the end of the video. You can jump to any point of the video if you like. Just use the timestamps down below. That's absolutely fine. But if you can hit that like button, that does help me out a heck of a lot. And if you do like the content on the channel, then consider subscribing. So for Oxford United, the team news is that there was one change from that side that got that draw against Burnley. Owen Dale coming into the side on the right wing. A few eyebrows is raised on that one. It meant a switch for Tyler Goodrum, who goes over to the left. And it meant Sariki Dembele has to make do of a place on the bench. Greg Lee was ill, so it meant Hide Ter Avest also got a place on the bench for the first time. Could be the first time we see him when it didn't turn out to be that way. And there's also a place on the bench for the lesser spotted Will Goodwin. Moving on to Luton Town then, it's been a struggle so far for Rob Edwards Hatters. Defeat to Plymouth on Friday night left Luton in 19th place going into this one. But Luton will be talking about the players that they are missing. Tanif Chong, Mads Anderson, Carlton Morris to name but a few and ex-Oxford's Shandon Baptiste. But there is still a lot of quality to show in this Luton Town side, not least from Alfie Doherty and from ex-Chelsea's ex-Premier League winner, Victor Moses. Let's move on to the game then. And straight away, let's just say it, the weather in the UK has been horrific. There's been torrential rain and Luton seems to be bearing, bearing the brunt of that um, as bad as anywhere in the UK. So fantastic effort from the ground staff to get this game actually going and finished. And it did make it quite a frantic start to the game and it was in enjoyable to watch pretty much straight from the start. And after seven minutes, it was Luton who carved out the first big chance. Dowerty's ball into the box is picked up by Clark on the edge of the box and he fainted to shoot and he kind of sold about four Oxford players, the dummy. There's about four Oxford players on the floor and Clark just sort of tried to hit his low shot into the blind corner. Cumming was beaten, but it just went wide of the post. But a minute later, Oxford had a huge chance to take the lead in this game. Tyler Goodrum just getting on the end of a loose ball, and he's in on the right-hand side. He squares it over for Owen Dale, who looks like he should just have a tap-in into an empty net. But Burke does superbly well for Luton to get back and clear the danger. But no two ways about this. Goodrum's ball should have been better, and Dale should be scoring. And two minutes later, Oxford were made to pay for that miss. And Clark this time did not miss for Luton and put the Hatters 1-0 up. Oxford pissing about with the ball on the edge of the box. El Mizzoudi playing a suicidal ball to Rodriguez, really, on the edge of the area. Clark just dispossesses him. He's in on goal and he slots it past Jamie Cumming. Nice finish from Clark, but seriously, between the two players, Rodriguez and El Mazzuni, one of them should have just put their foot through it and cleared the danger. But El Mazzuni and Rodriguez both had fine games, that mistake aside. And two minutes later, both of them nearly scored to get Oxford level. El Mazzuni got space on the edge of the box. His shot took a wicked deflection. And Kaminsky in the Luton goal made a, an unreal save, really, getting back to save it, to claw it away. But he could only claw it out to Rodriguez. And he looked like he just tucked it into the bottom corner. But Mengi had gone around to clear the ball off the line. And this game was, it didn't really let up in terms of it being a fast paced game. And it was such a contrast to the game we just had against Burnley, where it that's that seemed like it was played at a bit of a crawl. 
Whereas this one was just fast paced and already both sides had created more chances than, than probably we saw in that whole game. 25 minutes on the clock, another fine move by Oxford United. Saw Owen Dale free Peter Chioso on the overlap. PK got to the byline, cut the ball back to El Mazzuni, and El Mazzuni looked like he'd scored. It was a good shot, hit with plenty of pace. It looked like it was just going to nestle into the top corner, but it whistled wide of the post, and that was a big chance. For Oxford United. On 33 minutes it was Rodriguez again who was dispossessed on the halfway line and Adebayo got in on goal on the left hand side and his low shot was just wide of the goal but that was just a few minutes before more miserable defending for Oxford United made it 2-0 to Luton. It was just a long cross-field ball which created uncertainty between Jamie Cumming and Elliot Moore. I think it just sort of bounced right out just outside the penalty area, which meant Cumming was just uncertain of whether he could come and claim it. Moore had kind of left it for Cumming, and because the ball bounced, it allowed Brown to get on the end of it. He squared it back to Kraus on the edge of the box, and he found the bottom corner. Horrible, horrible goal for Oxford United to concede, and from there, it looked like it, it kind of felt like it could be game over because United had a mountain to climb. And also very unusual to see Oxford this poor at the back. Yes, we've conceded some goals in away games, but generally they've come from good play from the opposition. We haven't been this sort of clumsy and sloppy in defence in terms of gifting away chances, uh, Will Vaux against Coventry aside. Um, and, and you probably just have to put that down to the weather. But I shouldn't doubt this Oxford United side. I should not doubt this Des Buckingham team because on 44 minutes just before halftime, Oxford got back into the game. And it was a wonderful goal after an excellent spell of Oxford United possession. El Mazzuni ended up playing a blind pass to Tyler Goodrum on the left wing. And his first time effort coming in off the left wing is beautiful beautifully curled beyond Kaminsky and into the back of the net. It is another one for the Tyler Goodrum highlight reel, but it really was a fine team move where Oxford kept possession and looked dangerous for a couple of minutes in the build-up to that goal. And really, I would say Oxford did deserve a goal in this game, and it was a crucial time to get it. So take a breath everybody because that's 2-1 at half time and I'm not sure if it was just down to weather conditions but it felt a very different half of football from anything I've seen so far in the championship. Neither side is overplaying it, neither side is like just messing around with the ball, they're just trying to get it forward quickly and create chances and it's making it quite a very entertaining game. Oxford gifted Luton two goals, it took them well but they really did gift the Hatters those two goals but an excellent Tyler Goodrum strike has got us back into it but Luton still do look dangerous Dangerous had a Bayo up top, might not have that cutting edge, but he's a handful for the centre backs, and Clark and Brown are certainly looking dangerous in behind him. Menge at the back, um, or Mengi, sorry, at the back for Luton has also been fantastic. But I do feel for the most part that Oxford have matched Luton pretty well, and I do feel like it's anyone's game in the second half. Des Buckingham made a half-time change and it proved to be key. Kyle Edwards coming on for Owen Dale. Luton with the first chance of the second half. Dowerty, who is lethal from these dead ball situations, puts in another delightful cross. It looks like it's on a plate for Adebayo, but I think Nelson just got in there to deny him. It wasn't given as a corner, but I do think Nelson did really well to just either put Adebayo off or to just get something on it to put it behind and it was crucial because just six minutes after that Oxford were level we saw a teaser of this just a few moments before where Kyle Edwards got a ball into Ruben Rodriguez but this time they made it count Edwards got into space down the right hand side he smashed a low ball into Rodriguez who arrived bang on time to flick it home and the U's have squared it up. And for the next 10-15 minutes, Oxford were well on top of this game and the Luton fans were getting extremely restless. The only real uh, shot or real kind of chance that Luton had was from Victor Moses, who didn't really do much in the game and this was probably where he was at his most dangerous he got on the ball and he beat Kieran Brown probably two or three times before his shot was deflected behind but then Oxford had some great chances to take the lead in this one first one was a big shout for a penalty Tyler Goodrum looked like he'd got to the ball before the Luton defender the referee put the whistle to his lips but then he decided nah there's not enough in it 
Very, very frustrating. It looked like on commentary they said the linesman may have made that decision. I don't know how. The referee's in a much better position than the lino. But hey-ho, we have still haven't had a penalty yet this season. But then just a few minutes later, you're just left thinking, how are we not in the lead? Mark Harris gets his chance. He's one-on-one -on -one with Kaminsky. He did really well in the build-up. Just overhit that final touch, which meant Kaminsky could come out and narrow the gap. But Kaminsky did really well to block that effort. Edwards puts the ball then across to Goodrum who looks like he's going to score but once again Kaminsky makes a blinding save to keep the scores level. Game took another twist on 77 minutes when there was a red card for Luton Town. It was Liam Walsh who had literally just come on as a substitute. He was on the pitch for less than a minute. He lunged into Sariki Dembele who was also on for a sub for Oxford United and the ref sent him off. It, looking at it, it's a really silly lunge to do in the, just the middle of the park. Dembele wasn't like in on goal or anything. It was a silly, bordering on dangerous lunge. I thought it was a red card, but if you're a Luton fan watching this, I'd be really interested to know your thoughts on that one. And in my mind, I was thinking, come on, Oxford, go for it now against 10 men, final 15, 20 minutes of the game. But really, Oxford couldn't really create any chances when when they were playing against 10 men. And to be fair to Luton, they created the better chances and looked more threatening. They had a string of corners on about 85 minutes, the third of which... Dowerty puts it onto the head of Mengi. It looked like it was going in, but Jamie Cumming produced one of those Jamie Cumming Superman moments and kept the game level. Yeah, it seemed like both sides were quite happy with the point in the end. Annoyingly for Oxford United, Elliot Moore went off injured. There was a free kick right at the end of the game where Dembele could have won it for Oxford United, but instead of just drilling the ball in, he just floated the ball over the bar, which is a little bit frustrated. But all in all, Oxford get their first point away from home in this championship season. 2-2 draw before the game. You certainly would have taken it. And that brings me on to my final thoughts, really. And I'll start with the home side in Luton Town. And if you're a Luton fan watching this, I really would like your honest thoughts on this game and on your side as well. And whether you just thought maybe it was a case of the conditions making it quite a level playing field. Because that was the biggest takeaway from me is playing the two two of the three relegated sides back to back. We saw a Burnley side who at times Oxford couldn't get near they did look a class above us but I never felt Luton looked a class above Oxford United today which is maybe a good statement for us maybe a bit of a damning statement for you so I'm just curious of where you think you are with this Rob Edwards size I know you've got some key players out injured but surely you would have been looking at this one as a home game against Oxford United as a game where you really would have dominated it took the game to Oxford and Oxford maybe would have been hanging on, lucky to get something out of it. But I don't necessarily think that was the case. I, I do think you've got a little bit of a lack of cutting edge up top with Adebayo. He's a good, strong unit. Doesn't look like he's got a lot of goals in him. And maybe you're just missing a little bit of pace on the flanks as well. Maybe Moses can't provide that threat. He's a skillful player, but maybe he isn't as quick as he used to be. So maybe that's what's missing from your side. But you've certainly got a lot of quality technical players like in Dowerty, Krauss. Uh, Clark and Brown. At this early stage of the season, and it is still early, I would just like to know, do you feel that you've got the ability to go up, still be challenging at the top end of the season? Or is this going to be a season where you just kind of consolidate and then try and go again next season? But all in all, a cracking game of football and Luton certainly played more than their part in this one. It will be a feisty atmosphere, no doubt, when you come to the Kassam later on in the season and genuinely good luck for the rest of the season. And that brings me on to Oxford United and once again, this Des Buckingham side, my goodness, I should never doubt them really, should I? They've showed so much heart, so much character, so much resiliency to get back into this game. We saw a different side, a string in our bow against Burnley where we put our bodies on the line and defended that nil-nil draw today. We made mistakes, but we didn't let those mistakes cost us. We kept going, we kept playing our football, and I think we got just reward in the end, and maybe we could have even gone on to win this game. I thought it was an excellent game of football. Um, be interested to know, Oxford fans, what you thought about Owen Dale starting. Um, I don't think he was great in the game. I thought he did a couple of decent things. I think he linked up quite well with Peter Chioso. Peter Chioso, by the way, another extremely 
a fantastic game at the back for him. But Kyle Edwards, that substitution was made at exactly the right time and he made a massive difference when he came on. Maybe Edwards isn't quite fit enough to start, so maybe you could only give him half a game. Maybe he wanted Goodrum on the left because Goodrum certainly did look lively on the left-hand side. And I thought overall... Barring some individual error and mistakes, I thought Oxford were pretty good. It's a little bit of another frustrating game for Mark Harris, where we're not just not really creating many chances for him. But I still thought his work rate was really good up the top. Jamie Cumming again, not like too many saves to make in the game, but he still comes up with that top draw save at the end of the game to rescue us a point. And overall, I just think we can be really satisfied from what we've seen. Very, very worried to see Elliot Moore hobble off at the end of the game, be replaced by Long. We've seen this before, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's Elliot Moore out for the Pompey game now, and you probably won't see him, hopefully, if we're lucky, when we come back from the international break. But I think that's a big blow for that Portsmouth game. But I think this side should be really confident going into that Portsmouth game. I think this is the first time I've seen Oxford side be more than a match for their championship counterpart on the road. I felt the games against Coventry and against Bristol City, we were having to dig in for quite large, per large periods. But today, I thought we looked pretty strong right the way through the side and the midfield with the likes of Rodriguez and Volks and El Mazzuni looked pretty calm, looked pretty composed on the ball. And I thought we created some, some darn good chances in this game. So overall, very happy excellent game of football and an excellent point on the road and in the back of my mind I'm thinking oh maybe we could have got three out of this one but I'd like to know your thoughts Oxford United fans at least we've got that monkey off our back now of losing every away game we've put that run to bed and that's going to be a cracking game at the weekend at Portsmouth I'll be back to do a review of that Portsmouth game. But before that, I will do a, a, a silly little predictions video like I've been doing. So please continue to support those videos. Please continue to support those video, th this video. Um, and as always, I really appreciate your comments. And I really appre appreciate any support that you can give to this channel. So thank you very much. Come on, you yellows. And we'll be I'll be back very soon.